For the past three months, I've used my iPad Pro as my main computer, and I can definitely say that with iPadOS 26, it finally feels like a computer. The experience is more Mac-like, daily work is faster, and friction is down. Though real limitations still exist, and some will hit you harder than the others, depending on your workflow. That's why in this video we'll talk about where iPadOS 26 really shines, the limits that still hold it back compared to a Mac, and whether you can replace your Mac or any other laptop with an iPad iPadOS 26 has added lots of new features to make it more useful, like proper window management, background activities, upgrades to the Files app, and so on. They all enhance the iPad experience quite a lot in day-to-day -day use. So much so that you can do any regular work that you would do on your average laptop pretty much flawlessly. In my use case, that meant answering emails or writing scripts, as well as researching video ideas or simply consuming content. And I'm glad to say that when it came down to these tasks, I've practically had no issues. The new windowing system feels like a double monitor setup because it's so easy to just open a second window for research or just have something running there while you're doing a task in the main window. It's literally no different from a laptop setup. You can also add your usual apps to the layout and just switch between them on demand. This is how I've been using the iPad, and I can confidently say that it's been very practical. That's probably been my favorite feature. And if you need extra settings, thanks to the new drop-down bar, they're one click away. Also, it allows for easier navigation within certain apps. The new liquid glass design ties everything together, making it easy to use and giving the iPad much more real estate for the new window system to shine. This used to be a big problem on previous iPadOS versions. You had all these windows, but no real way to manage them. Now, everything is so easy to hide and expand that it gives you much more breathing room on the screen. And this extra space also shows in how you handle documents. Working with files was like a breath of fresh air. Not only can you pin them down to the dock for quick access, but the Files app finally lets you properly format external drives, with options to choose the file system you want. That's a full Mac-like feature, and it makes handling storage a lot easier. The option to set default apps for specific file types was also surprisingly useful, and working with external storage overall was simple and straightforward. So in my experience, the iPad was helping and inviting rather than limiting me when it came down to trivial everyday tasks. And I've certainly enjoyed it more than my PC for these tasks, especially because of portability. But even when it came down to harder tasks like video editing, for example, it was holding up pretty well. The keyboard shortcuts made it feel just the same as on PC, the trackpad movement felt predictable for once, and due to its hardware, editing was also pretty smooth and really not much different from the PC. It took me the same amount of time editing this video on the iPad as it would take me on the PC, except I had a lot more fun and flexibility. Also, now that the iPad supports background activities, I wasn't tied to one task I was doing anymore. I could set the export of a video or a file transfer and then go to over apps about my day, without having to worry whether the task cancelled itself in the background, while also being able to monitor the progress. For once, the iPad really felt like a proper laptop. It can now do basic Mac tasks without trying to actively limit you, because that's the wrong way to use an iPad. Still, unfortunately, just like there are many positives, there are also things that drive me up the wall. All apps are still basic iPad apps, which is not an issue if you do simple work like emailing or writing, but as soon as you need to get into more specific work, it all starts to fall apart. Many apps just don't have the same functionality when it comes to the iPad, so you're forced to look for workarounds like having to editing apps that cover for each other's lack of features or straight up use a web version of an app, like I had to do the YouTube Studio app. Just because the app lacks basic features, simply because Apple won't allow Mac apps to run on the iPad, despite sharing the same hardware. Also, some apps are really stubborn and just won't play nice, like CapCut for example, you just can't expand it however you want, despite it being a core feature of iPadOS 26. It will expand however it likes, and there's nothing you can do about it. And the same goes about its background activity. It just won't work, and will tell you that the export failed as soon as there's something that intervenes even if it's as small as a system notification about low battery and whatnot. And it's not just CapCut, YouTube Studio is the same, and I'm sure there's plenty of other apps that behave like this too. It just comes down to whether you'll encounter these issues or not within your workflow. Maybe the apps that you need will behave nicely, and you'd never know. But that's just one part of a problem, there are many others. 
For example, some drives or files still don't always play nicely with the iPad. If a system doesn't recognize the format or doesn't like a file on your drive, it might not show the drive at all. And there's nothing you can do about it, unless you format the drive elsewhere and then plug it into the iPad. These cases are rare, but when they do happen, they can be very frustrating. Then there's a ton of annoying limitations that shouldn't be there to begin with. Like if you want to play two videos at once, it will stop the other video, and while that might seem unnecessary to you, like who plays two videos at once, right? Well, first of all, you might be listening to a video in the background and watch some other video on mute in the meantime, like a short clip on your feed, but that will just stop the original video and you'll have to go back to it and press play again. But the worst part is that this behavior translates to literally all media. If you want to listen to music while you edit a video, even if it doesn't have sound in it, it will pause your music, so you'll have to edit in silence. Or you might be listening to music and scroll your feed at the same time, and if there's a video on the feed, it will pause your music even if you don't open the video. Stuff like this is what boils your blood, it just shouldn't exist. Not to mention that iPadOS doesn't support memory swapping, so if you run out of RAM, which is not that hard to do with the current windowing system, it will start closing gaps in the background, which might be one of your projects, though it usually saves everything, so it shouldn't be a disaster. But with the iPad, you never know. Still, for most people, an iPad on iPadOS 26 can be your main computer. For example, if you're someone who just relies on simple tasks like checking your emails, researching and writing, or watching a movie here and there, the iPad will do just fine. You won't encounter any issues whatsoever, and it's gonna be a device you'll certainly love, especially because of its form factor and hardware features, and you can get an iPad for very cheap. So for you, I'd recommend you try an iPad. Or if you're a content creator like me, none of the listed problems were truly a deal breaker. Some for sure were more annoying than the others, but you also get the benefits of an iPad. Like the beautiful double OLED panel with its peak color accuracy, also its thinness, excellent speakers, and the ability to work with an Apple Pencil, which I personally find way better for editing or taking notes. So if that speaks to you, you totally could use an iPad as your main device. But it might not be smooth sailing every day, though most of the time it's going to be a positive experience. But to get the bigger picture, you'll still want to use a keyboard, and you certainly don't have to buy Apple's overpriced keyboard. I got mine for 80 bucks from literally a no-name brand on Amazon, and it works flawlessly and looks just as good as Apple's. However, if you rely on specific apps or tasks that the iPad just doesn't support, like coding for example, multi-user support, or many other scenarios, it's still quite far off. So can you call it a MacBook replacement? Well, it seems like in many areas it's pretty much on par with a Mac, which is impressive. Features like the improved Files app, real background tasking, and better window management genuinely make the workflow smoother and more accessible, at least for day-to-day -day tasks. But there's still way too many rough edges and uncertainties. So if you rely on a Mac for specific or versatile work, I don't think the time has come yet to switch completely. However, if you're mainly handling day-to-day -day tasks or casual productivity like video or photo editing, the iPad now meets those needs. For the first time, it feels possible, but not yet inevitable. 